Welcome everyone to another episode of Automate with Dave. Today we are going to talk about Blue Prism Tutorials Split PDF Documents. So PDF Documents, well this is a very widely known uh, particular file format as you all know. This is commonly being used nowadays for uh, showing various images, text, vector graphics etc with the help of Postgres language. So, talking about PDFs and their uses in industries, they are almost using almost every industry. Um, in healthcare, in finance, they are also using energy, resources, insurance. So, you can see them in form of a general ledger. As you can see, this is from an accounting firm. We have a hospital bill. And at the end, we have a particular invoice of a product. So today we are going to see a very interesting use case on how we can split such a PDF document that can span across multiple pages into separate documents using Blue Prism. So very common, this is like indeed one of the very com common query that I get from the, uh, like whenever I talk to other developers. Since we do not have any pre-built Blue Prism business object in order to interact with such PDF files, many people find themselves stuck. Well, the answer is pretty simple, but well, at the same time, not so simple. So there are multiple vendors who can provide you DLLs or solutions which can interact with PDF file objects and perform a range of operations such as splitting a, a particular PDF document, merging multiple documents into one file, extracting data uh, or the text from the file or you can even say converting images. So now we are going to see such solutions and we are going to see how they are like, distinguished. So first comes the license solutions which will have a cost associated with them. So we have Adobe, we have Abby, then we have Boost Robotics, and also we have Gridiris. Next comes the proprietary solution. Like if you are using them commercially, they will cost you, such as iTech Sharp. It is one such TLL that you can use. And at the end, we have the open source solutions, which are free to use, obviously, that you have uh, in the form of PDF Sharp and XPDF Reader. So now the question comes what is the hassle? Well, the main hassle that many people face is the additional licensing cost. No one wants to add the cost to a robot that you're already using. So today we are going to see how PDF Sharp, one of the open source solutions present in the market can help us with our use case of splitting PDF documents. So well, without any further ado, let's automate this use case, shall we? So today we are going to see the use case of how we are going to split a particular PDF document having multiple pages in two different sub documents. So as you know, in Blue Prism, we don't have any uh, initial, like any pre-built or any given uh, VBO or visual business object to us through which we can, you know, interact with any PDF file. So today we are going to use a specific DLL called as PDF Sharp and we are going to see how we can use this, the ability of this DLL in order to create various business objects using the code state. So there will be some C-sharp coding involved in it. So we are going to uh, see through all those parts. And the very the, the best part about this DLL is that it's an open source DLL. So it is free of cost and you can use it as much as you want. So if you go to internet, you can see like PDF Sharp and Microdoc. So from PDF Sharp download that you will see a source forge.net. So you can just download this particular PDF file and you can use any language in order to invoke it. So now this was about the DLL part. Now let's uh, quickly see how we can create a particular business object. So I will show you. So first I will go to my studio. Once I go to my studio here, you can see I have multiple, I have like processes and objects opened up. So you might not have these many groups or folders as we call them in Blue Prism. So you can create it if you want. It helps to segregate the particular objects uh, better. So here you can go to create group. It will ask you for a name. You can give it and yes, your business object, your group has been created. So what I will do is let's say inside this group, that is visual business object in my case, I want to create an object. So I will right click here and click on create object. So the very first thing it does is it asks me like, uh, what is the name of the business object that you want to give? So I will give something like a very simple name, a PDF VBO, I can see it, right? And I can click on next. And here it asks me to give a description. So as a good practice, you should always give a description. So I will just write something like this is a sample. This is a, I will say business object created in order to help to interact 
with PDF documents. Okay. And here I, I can check this uh, box. So what it will do is it will open the business object right after this wizard has been closed. So I will click on finish to close this wizard. And you can see, boom, this particular PDF video has been opened up. Okay, so I have my object studio opened up directly. Okay. And in my object studio, one thing I will do the resolution, I think I will just make it 100 and I will try to maximize it here. From here, I will, let's say, let's maximize. Yeah. So here, if you see, I have a PDF VBO. So I will just enlarge it a bit. So this is the page description. And this is the very first page that I have that is initialized. So I will go to the page description of the initialized page. And here I will go to the code options. Here I will make sure that I have my language as C sharp, the very first thing. Second thing is uh, here I have to now add a DLL of PDF sharp. Now let's now I have shown you how to download that DLL. So you can download it from sourceforge.net. So once you have downloaded it, the next thing you need to do is you need to copy this DLL. So once I copy it, what I can do is I can go to C and here I can go to program files. Here is the Blue Prism Limited. So whatever is the installation folder of your Blue Prism. So here, there you will go to the Blue Prism Automate. So here you will have all the folders like VBO, Skills, Tesseract. You don't need to go inside any of the folder. Just add the root, you need to paste it. So here you will see there are already, there will be a bunch of DLLs. So once you paste it, I've already pasted it in my case. You can see PDF sharp .dll. I have this file. So now, so this is the only way in which you can import any DLL or invoke any DLL object in your business objects, okay? So what I'm going to now do is I will go here and I will add a uh, reference. Here I can write PDF sharp, okay? And dot DLL I just need to there. Once I do this, here there's a namespace that is imported within this DLL with the same name that is PDF sharp. So I will just paste it here, PDF sharp. So once I have both of my DLLs and my import defined, now I can move ahead. So I will click on OK. I will click on action one, rename it to something that makes logic. Let's say split PDF document. Once I uh, write it like this, so here I have a page description. Here again, if I want, I can make the page description. I will here create two blocks just to make it like a bit visible to me, which are my inputs, which are my outputs. Here I give inputs. Here I give outputs. Okay. And if you want, you can just change the colors just so that they make a bit of a distinguish. Okay, they are a bit distinct now. I can say, what are my inputs? What are my outputs? Okay. So now I can again change everything to, let's say now, yeah. Now what I can do is I can go here again and now I can drag some data items at the very beginning. So this data item that I have, let me make it to black, default to black. I can just copy this and paste it. So I will tell you how many data items I require and why I require them. So what exactly is my mind? I will tell you the very first thing is for any PDF document, the first thing I require will be a no doubt it will be the input file path, right? So I will just say input file path. So this is the very first variable that I have in my mind. Click on text and now I have, I can, I will give an initial value to test it at the same time. So what I can do is I will first show you the file that I have with me. So if I go here, so here, here you can see I have this active tool.pdf. So what I will do, I will simply come here and make a copy as a path. And here I will paste it. I don't need the double quotes whenever I'm setting anything in my data item directly. So you should remember that, okay? So this is the very first thing I require. And now I will go to the next thing and I will show you what is the next thing I'm going to do. So I will just size it a bit. Now the next data item that I require, well, this was a MySQL setup that got opened up. No worries, okay, yeah. So like uh, I was saying, now the next thing I will require will be a output folder, like where my files should be stored after they are scripted. So I will say something like an output folder. And here also I will give something of a text and I will just give it till PDF demo. So in the same folder only, I want to see the files. So right now you saw we had only that uh, particular PDF file and just one DLL file. We don't have any output files as of now. 
So once I have uh, given it here, okay, the next thing I can do is I need one more variable. I can say, and I will tell you why. Okay, so let me just size it a bit, and yeah, here. So here, what I can do is that let's say now I have a file, and I now want to create multiple files out of that. So I can give a prefix, and after that I can say underscore one, underscore two, underscore three, depending on the number of pages that are there. So here, what I can do is I can give it like output file name prefix. Okay. Now again, for all my data items, I'm not giving the description. As a best practice, you should always give a description. Okay. So I will name it something like a output. Let's say so it will be like outputs underscore one, output underscore two. So this is what I'm thinking. So once I do this, and I will give it here. Okay. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I will also mention one output. Let's say as a result, or we can just name it something like a message. So this will tell me if my uh, business object got executed successfully or not. I can use it for exception handling also. Going ahead, right? So it is. Uh, it can help me in that way. So let it. Let me give it as a text, and we. will be having getting its value at the end of our code stage so now once we have uh, implemented this much the very next thing i am going to do is i'm so i'm going to just create these like i'm just going to map these variables to the arguments so we have to make them as an argument because uh, eventually the value in this data item will not be hard coded like we are doing it it will be coming from process studio so for that i need to go to the start stage and i immediately need to Uh, provide this value so you double click on start stage you get it and once you do this the next thing i can do is i can have let's say output folder and here i can have something let's say input uh sorry uh, i can say uh, output file name prefix and here i can simply bind the values so i have this one output folder and uh, input file part and once i've done it i click on okay so they have been mapped now here also i have to do that do the same thing i will just create one more variable called as message and here also you need to give the description so that your user will then only know what i need to do here if you don't give this then they won't be knowing what this variable is for so as a best practice you should give a description the next thing i will do is i will use a code stage i have to name this code stage so let's name it something like um, split document okay i have written split i think yeah split okay so now here i will be adding the values again so three values we have input file path i had i had a output file name prefix about to folder so so here just we just make sure of one thing if you put space in the name so in your code state whenever you will be referring this variable referencing this variable you won't be able to reference them with a the space they will be automatically substituted with the underscore you will be seeing that so here i am giving a space just be mindful of that input space file space path then here i can say this variable is output folder similarly this variable is something like a output file name prefix if i go to output here also i can add one value and i can just say that it's a message okay and now when i go to the code in the code stage now you will be able to see like okay i have these four variables uh input file path i will just magnify a bit okay but i think the resolution is somewhat getting impacted so let me keep it this way only okay so i will just tell you so this is these are like four variables this is input underscore file underscore path like i told you everything gets replaced with a underscore whatever has a space so here uh, so let's begin coding so the very first thing i will do is i will put a try catch so this is for my exception handling so whatever exception comes in try that will be come then be getting passed to the catch block so here i am catching what kind of exception so i am catching the super class of exception let's say exception ex and then i can just mention the block that needs to be executed once the exception has been caught so here what i will do is in my block i have a output variable so that is called as message so i will write message equals and then i can write i can call the string class and use the format function so in the format function i can write something like a error colon and then i can give a placeholder saying placeholder of 0 and as a second argument 
of the format function i can pass the value uh, that will be ex dot message so from the for the exception object that i have mentioned here i am using the message attribute and i am converting into a string variable it will be by default a string but let but then also let us cast it so now here what i am doing so here i am using this format function what format function does is it will take the placeholder that is the zero within curly braces and here it will be substituting this value with my exception message that is why i am using this particular command okay so now uh, once i do this the next thing is here now i will be writing the code so what will be the very first function that i will be doing i will be reading the input pdf file okay so this will be the my very first function that i will be doing i can say that input file document okay so now this is a variable so what is the data type of this variable so this is something like a this is something pdf document so this is this has this class is present within the dll pdf shard that we have imported in the previous steps so that is why so you have to import that dll otherwise this will throw you an error okay at the compile time so now what i will do i will say equals to now i have one more class called as pdf reader okay and then i can use a dot open so this is a function that i can use dot open and in the dot open so yeah here also i just miss one semicolon so yeah and here what i can do is i can give the variable i can pass the variable that is input file so you can see i am using a underscore instead of a space and now i also need to provide a second parameter so this will tell me in which file mode do i need to read this pdf it will be a read mode or a modify mode or a import mode so in our case we require it to be a import mode so that we can so basically i can say that i am going to do some kind of a manipulation with the file itself so i can say pdf document open mode so this is a particular uh, class that i have so there is a constant in this class that is called as a import so i have to write it like this dot import so once i write it so i will be reading the file now once you are reading the file now what you want to do i want to i can say iterate within each and every page and for, whenever i am let's on the current page i immediately want to create a output document with that particular uh, let's say underscore one so if i am on page one it should be something like the prefix underscore one dot pdf if i am on page two it should be prefix underscore page two dot pdf so to implement that kind of a logic what i can say is first i will say uh, iterating i can say iterating two pages in the input document file okay and here what i can do i can write a for loop in the for loop i can give something like for index so this is my variable called as index and i will make it as a zero then i can say index less than now i have this uh, file with me this is the input file document i will use this object in this object there is one attribute called as page count it will give me the total number of count okay so if i have four pages so it will go from 0 to let's say four okay like that it is going to go okay and uh, so like it will actually not go from 0 to 4 it you will be seeing in the code it is actually will be iterating through like 0 1 2 3 the moment it will become four it won't be executing because you are using the less than not a less than equal to if you use index equal to 1 then you can go and use a less than equal to sign and here what i will be doing is i will be incrementing the index at each and every point so once i do this much okay so now here i will be mentioning writing the rest of my code so the very first thing that i am will be doing is i will be creating a output document so like i told you that as soon as i am on the current page the very first thing i'll be doing will be i'll be creating a output document object so i'll be creating a output document object so this output document object now now the at the very first time it's a null object you don't have anything here right so what i need to do is i will be using this class i will be creating just one particular constructor out of it so this will be uh, in, so here instead of input file document i can make it as a output file document and here i will be saying equal to new and then i will be again using this line and yes this is how my object now looks like okay so the very first step we have done 
now we will be setting output of some attributes of the output document object okay so i can say setting attributes for output document object so now here i have to now set all the attributes so what are the attributes that i can set so let's see that so the very first thing is a version so i have a version attribute so i want the, the a version of my output file to be same as the version of the input file so i will write it like a dot, dot version equal to dot version okay i can now simply i will be now showing you what i'm going to do next next is what i have with me is a creator so it is present under the info attribute of the object so i can use this dot info dot creator and i can simply paste it here okay the next thing that i have is something like a title so now the title also is present under the info object so i will be taking this much part and here i will be mentioning title dot title now what my title should look like for the document i can say my title should be something like a string dot format you already know what string dot format does first i need to provide a format so i can write uh, something like a curly braces zero i can write page first i can state like page zero of this so this will be something like page zero of uh, i can say the current so i will be now say, saying something like let's say whenever i'm on the first page and let's have total three pages i can say page one of three then when i'm second document i can the second document title will be something like a page two of three then page three of three okay so for that now what i will be doing is i will be now mentioning here uh, like two parameters here okay so the very first parameter at this uh, point will be uh, page 0 of i can say for 0 will be index plus 1 why plus 1 because at the very first time the index will be 0 but we are not on the 0th page i am actually on the page number 1 but my program reads it as a like the first array item for any in any programming language starts from zero especially in c sharp it just starts from zero so we have to follow this and what we will be doing is the next attribute will be something of like i can say i won't say page zero of one or two i will say page zero of the title the input document title okay so uh, i can just say now i will use this much this thing and then i will be using info Oh, sorry the, my mouse has got shifted there i will be using dot info dot title okay so i am saying i am on the page one of the title of like the let's say the title of my input document is something like xyz i so that uh, first splitted document title will be page one of xyz second will be page two of xyz so it will go like this and at the very end now what i will be doing is i will be adding the page to the output and document object so now i will be adding this particular page that i am on so for this what i will be doing is i will be taking this i will be calling this object there is a dot add page function that i have so in the add page function now what i need to do is i need to pass the value so i have this input page file document okay so here i have one attribute called as pages and here i will have to now pass which page i have to add so currently i am on index number 0 so i will be adding dot pages of 0 so dot pages takes an array it's a array kind of a uh, i can say a structure or data structure so you need it will start from 0 1 2 3 3 so i can say that I, i want the very first page when i'm saying i want the first page programmatically it means that i need the page of the array array of the 0th index okay so here i will be putting this also okay one more thing i forgot here also i need to put a semicolon once i do this the last step would be to i would say save the output document file okay so when i do this one now here what i need to do here the very first thing i will be doing is i will be using this particular object dot save So this is the function that I have. I have to now give the file path, the save file path. Like at which file path I need to save. 
so first thing is i if you remember i have a output folder so here my output folder will be used so output underscore folder then i will be concatenating it with a uh, i would say i can concatenate with a double slash okay so the, uh, because it uh, your program won't take it as a single slash it is like an escape character so you need to escape it so it means that output folder then one slash in reality now after this what i want is i can say i want something like i will again i will use a string dot format and here how i want to name my file so i want to name my file something like a placeholder underscore again one more placeholder i can say one dot pdf so here what i will be putting in the first placeholder the first placeholder is the prefix you can say so my prefix variable was output underscore file underscore name underscore prefix and what is the second argument i want it to be the current page number so the current page number is index plus 1 so it will be not be like output file output slash underscore zero we don't need to start from zero we actually need to start from one right so it will be index plus 1 in this case so once you have done all of these things the very last step will be to set the output variable that is message and we can write something like message success and i can say that um, pdf uh, document got splitted successfully okay so you can give any message this is for your exception handling so once you get a message then you can use it in your code so now i will be doing a check code to see if are there any errors in our code so, so yeah i just forgot a semicolon at 21 and 25 yes so in 21 i forgot semicolon so this mistake happens when you code a lot in python nowadays i am more in python so this is why i face this issue a lot okay uh so here one more error that i am facing is the name index does not exist okay yes so here what i can write is i can write like a int index okay and then again i can do a check code okay and at the uh, there are only couple of errors there is a name string does not exist in the current that line number 15 uh, i have written a uh, sting okay just miss one r so the only issue with four stages is it does not it does not have the uh, your intelligence feature so it can't tell you at the time of writing the code where you are doing any issue or problem or not so yes document open document mode does not exist at line number 4 okay okay so one thing that i can see uh, here was like i just change is import i just need to capital i if i go to again check code so here i can just see one more error if you see now this is one error that i have pdf document cannot be found at reader so yeah why this error is there i will tell you here uh, while importing the name space okay i just forgot to import one thing that was pdf char dot pdf you just need to add dot pdf at the end so once you add this dot pdf i think uh, your error should go away let's just check this if i do a check code again yeah most of them are gone now only few of them are there that is the pdf reader and uh, pdf uh, document open mode okay. reader and open mode will also be because of one more uh, namespace that i forgot to import so i can go here i can copy this i can paste dot io and then here i can again check the code
So most of them are done. Uh, this is not a definition of dot open. So here I think uh, the reason is the open starts with a capital O. Uh, okay, let me now try this. Let me give a check code. Yes, so now we don't have any issues with our code. It's totally fine. And I can now just simply link the files. So once I link them here, okay. Now the first thing I can do is click on set next page. Okay. So initially, let me also show you at the same time, I don't have any PDF files here, okay. So as soon as I press an F10, and once more I press an F10, you can see the message. The message variable current value is success. It is telling us that, okay, our code works successfully. Now let's verify it. And yes, we got three different documents here, if you see. And all of them are of different size. And I think, yes, they got converted into different PDF files. Okay. So this is how you can split one PDF file into multiple PDF files. Okay. And this is how you need to debug it at real time. Sometimes you might face some issues, some errors, but you can always go ahead and debug that. And now, if even if you want, you can do one more thing. You can just simply publish this. And once you have published this particular code, uh, here, what you can try is, you can just simply remove all these parameters from here. And yes, you can then use it from your process studio. Just use some, uh, you can use some variables yourself. And yes, your code will be ready. So I can say like this object has been published successfully. Okay, and then I can give a save changes. And then now what I can do is I can go back to my blue prism. Here I have one dummy process that I've created. I can just double click there. Okay, and from here what I can do, I can go here and here I can just remove some of the already written codes that I was using. And here I can use the action stage. In the action stage, uh, I can search for that business object. Okay, so that was a PDF view as you can see. Here it is asking me all my file paths again. I can give the file path, okay. Uh, quickly, let's just test it from here also, just to be sure. And I will just delete them again. Okay, I will just pass the value. Now here, when I'm passing it from uh, this particular wizard or screen, I just need to give this uh, double quotes here. Otherwise it won't work, okay? So here it's fine. Output folder, I will just remove the file name out of it. And once I've done that, I can just give something like a test. Okay, so it will be like test underscore one, two, three. And I can store this result somewhere like a message variable. And that's it. Once I do this thing, um, I can come here. So I have this one. Okay, I didn't name this properly. Let me just name it like a split PDF document. Okay, then let's name this object like this only. I will link to this. And I will just again try it to set next stage. Press F10. So again, now it's stepping over. So here, if you see the message has come up that it has got successfully. So my arguments are got passed correctly. It means, and here I have three documents. So guys, yes, this is how you can create, you can use the split uh, PDF functionality. I can say, so we are like splitting it with some custom logic, but using the PDF sharp TLF. So thank you everyone. And let me know if you face any issues or if you have any questions.